Hey guys, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about the three steps to enhancing your strength program. The first thing that we need to do when we're getting ready to enhance our strength program is I know it's difficult for you guys because we love percentages due to its simplicity to training, but we have to forget about percentages. Now, the reason that we can't use percentages based off of our best competitive maximum or best PR of all time is because it's fluctuating. It's not always there. One of the major reasons it's not always there is we're not always in a completely restored state. So a lot of times when we're training, right, we've all seen the super compensation curve. Our bodies, if this is homeostasis, goes like this, okay? So if we test our max accidentally right here, we're gonna be 10 to 20% weaker because we're restoring our body's ability to recover from the previous training bouts. So percentages don't really work really well because they're not a good indicator of where we are at today. That's why at an advanced level, we switch to RPE. RPE is rate of perceived exertion, and that means that it allows adaptability throughout the day and more adjusting. Most people that move to RPE training instead of percentages, not only tend to train longer, but they also sustain training for much, much longer periods of time. I'm talking years because they don't lock themselves into percentage barriers, which is a huge issue. So remember that if you base your stuff on percentages, that's awesome. If you're a beginner or intermediate, once you start to understand your body and what your exertion levels are, you probably should have switched to RPE. The next big thing that we gotta be really focusing on, especially for law of accommodation, is we have to vary the forms of muscle contractions, right? So sometimes, like I posted yesterday on Instagram, I do a lot of lap pull downs with a one, two, three, one, two, three tempo. So we can tempo our contractions. Now that is gonna negate a lot of stretch reflex and store kinetic energy and make the muscles tend to work harder, okay? So remember that you need those types of contractions. You need quickness types of contractions, i.e. the dynamic method, moving as fast as possible. You need the maximum effort method, which is straining as hard as possible with no indication of time, right? So if I ask you how much you bench, you tell me 300 pounds. I didn't ask you how fast you did it. I asked you how much you could lift. The dynamic effort method would be a submaximal method in how fast you can move a particular weight. So a time component. So if you start to think about what I'm saying, we have stuff that's close to isometric. We have stuff that is very quick. We have stuff that's barely moving at all. Okay, and why that's important is force velocity curve. Okay, now this force velocity curve actually does this as well. So this is on the eccentric side. So sometimes controlling the eccentric is gonna give us some advantages. Sometimes training close to maximal effort is gonna give us advantages. Sometimes training speed strength or strength speed is gonna be an advantage. And sometimes doing plyometrics is gonna be an advantage. So you need to train all forms of the force velocity curve. And how you do that is you gotta vary the muscle contractions. That's why I tell people it's so important to train conjugate style, because if you look at what I'm saying, you're training nearly all of these in a weekly scenario. You're training tempos, you're training maximum effort, you're training dynamic effort. So vary the form of muscle contractions and that's gonna help your strength program immensely. The next thing that we need to do is we need to alternate phases of training. Now, what does this mean? Well, if you go into winningstrength.com, you're gonna see power building manuals, off season manuals, hypertrophy manuals, power lifting manuals, power building manuals, which is kind of a hybrid. The point is, is that you need to be constantly changing the phases of your training. And the reason is that, in my personal opinion, usually after about three, six, or 10 weeks, if the volume parameters haven't changed and depending upon your level of ability, your body is already adapted to the load in which it's seeing. So training phases of training, or changing your phases of training, meaning isolaterals, bilaterals, utilizing all different types of implements, allow you to keep from the law of accommodation. And if we look at the law of accommodation, that states that if we use the same thing 
for too long, it no longer creates a desired effect. Well, for training different forms of muscle contractions, we're using RPE to allow our bodies to adapt to different stressors throughout the day. And then we're alternating the styles of training that we're using on a monthly, yearly, and you know, very large phase basis. Then what we're gonna end up having is a better reaction to the training. Okay, so I know that specificity has been jammed down you guys' throat for a long time, how to get better, but in reality, specificity has major limitations because of the law of accommodation. So if you follow these three particular things when you're thinking about your training, you're not only gonna make better decisions, but you're also gonna be able to train harder and longer.